Guru Maharaj, we are in 4.10. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Kiran Prabhu, do you want to read the sloga today? Uh, okay. Okay. Bita Raga Bhaya Krodha Manamaya Mama Upasritaha Bahabo Gyano Tapasa Puta Puta Matabhava Agataha. Translation of uh, being freed from attachment, fear, and anger, being fully absorbed in me, taking and taking refuse in me, many, many persons in the past became purified by knowledge of me and thus they all attained transcendental love for me. Purport. As described above, it is very difficult for a person who is too materially affected to understand the personal nature of Supreme Absolute Truth. Generally, people who are attached to the bodily conception of life are so absorbed in the materialism that it is almost impossible for them to understand how the Supreme can be a person. Such materialists cannot even imagine that there is a transcendental body which is imperishable, full of knowledge and eternally blissful. In the materialistic concept, the body is perishable, full of ignorance and completely miserable. Therefore, people in general keep this same bodily idea in mind when they are informed of the personal form of the Lord. For such materialistic men, the form of the gigantic material manifestation is supreme. Consequently, they consider the supreme to be impersonal. And because they are too materially absorbed, the conception of retaining the personality after liberation from matter frightens them when they are informed that spiritual life is also individual and personal. They become afraid of becoming persons again. And so they naturally prefer a kind of merging into the impersonal void. Generally, they compare the living entities to the bubbles of the ocean which merge into the ocean. That is the highest perfection of spiritual existence attainable with individual personality. This is a kind of fearful stage of life devoid of perfect knowledge of spiritual existence. Furthermore, there are many persons who cannot understand spiritual existence at all. Being embarrassed by so many theories and by contradictions of various types of philosophical speculation, they become disgusted or angry and foolishly conclude that there is no supreme cause and that everything is ultimately void. Such people are in a diseased condition of life. Some people are too materially attached and therefore do not give attention to spiritual life. Some of them want to merge into the supreme spiritual cause and some of them disbelieve in everything, being angry at all sorts of spiritual speculation out of hopelessness. The last, This last class of men take to the shelter of some kind of intoxication and their effective hallucinations are sometimes accepted as spiritual vision. One has to get rid of all three stages of material consciousness, attachment to material life, fear of spiritual personal identity, and the conception of void that arises from frustration in life. To get free from these three stages of the material concept of life, one has to take complete shelter of the Lord, guided by the bona fide spiritual master, and follow the disciplines and regulative, regulative principles of devotional life. The last stage of the devotional life is called bhavaha, or transcendental love of Godhead. According to Bhakta Rasamrit Sindhu, the signs of devotional service, Adho Sraddha Tata Sadhu Sangha Tata Bhajana Kriya Tato Na Artha Nibriti Syata Tato Nishtha Ruchis Tata Atha Sakti Tato Bhava Tata Prema Pidha Chanti Sadhakanam Ayam Premanaha Pradur Bhave Bhavate Kramaha In the beginning, one must have uh, preliminary desire for self-realization. This will bring one to the stage of trying to associate with persons who are spiritually elevated. In the next stage, one becomes initiated by an elevated spiritual master. And under his instructions, the neophyte devotee begins the process of devotional service. 
the execution of devotional service under the guidance of spiritual master one becomes free from all material attachment attains steadiness in self realization and acquires a taste for hearing about the absolute personality of godhead shri krishna this taste leads to one further forward to attachment for krishna consciousness which is matured in bhavah or the preliminary stage of transcendental love of god real love for god is called prema the highest perfectional stage of life in this prema stage there is constant engagement in the transcendental love and service of the lord so by the slow process of devotional service under the guidance of one of our spiritual master one can attain the highest stage being freed from all material attachment from the fearfulness of one's individual spiritual personality and from the frustrations that result in void philosophy thus one can ultimately attain to the abode of the supreme lord so you can see prabhupad's given a detailed description of the development of devotional service he's quoted that verse by rupa goswami how the bhakti yoga process begins with shraddha and then the goal is to come to prema but you have to go through all the different stages so from faith and to get faith even before that to get faith where do you get faith from you don't just you're not just born with that shrad you have you have to get that faith from some kind of association so there has to be some kind of sadhu sangha there to give that faith and that faith brings you to sadhu sang to again to associate with the devotees and learn bhajana kriya and then anartha nivritti then asakta and then nishta and then uh, asakti and then bhava and prema like that there are i think nine different stages so you have to go through these stages you know you can it's not so easy thing of course it's very it's quite quick they say once you get through uh, anartha nivritti then it's quite quick but the difficult thing is to get through anartha nivritti So we're hearing some of the problems which devotees which people go through in the course of devotional service attachment fear and anger these problems are there attachment a fear of a spiritual identity attachment to something material and anger and when out of frustration that we're not able to achieve anything we, we think everybody's wrong nobody knows what they're doing it's all a waste of time give it and give it ever give up everything <laughs> so the process of bhakti yoga is it's a challenge you can see it is people say oh it's so easy it's it's not so easy and this not if we want to get prem not if we want to come to the highest level it's not easy it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort a lot of endeavor from the every individual hmm. any questions so this fourth chapter is about transcendental knowledge divya gyan right we should have knowledge we should know what we're doing we should understand krishna has already described about himself about the nature of his transcendental appearance in this world arjuna couldn't remember his previous births but krishna could remember so there's a big difference between us and krishna even between arjuna and krishna there's a big difference so don't think we can become god so easily <laughs> try to become the servant of god that's the goal to be the servant of god we can never ever become god of course but we can become the servant that is our proper position
So Prabhupada said, in the beginning, one must have a, a pre, 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 predominant, a, prominent, a preliminary desire for self-realization. So we have to want to actually understand and realize our spiritual identity. And we have to be willing to make some effort, to make some sacrifices for this. So when we understand the importance of something, then we want to do it. Just like when the children are studying at school, you impress upon them, it's important for them to study, to do well at school. You want them to get good results because then they can get more education and then they can find it easier to live in the world if they have some qualifications behind them. So similarly in the path of spiritual perfection, we have to be willing to make some sacrifices and follow the process. We have to follow the rules and regulations, we have to chant. If we don't do these things, then we can't expect to get the result. Of course, nice people have an interest. You have an interest, okay. You have to develop the interest. We have to want to also follow, develop the process, follow the path and become Krishna conscious. Okay, so we'll go on to the next verse. Sirangro Prabhu, do you want to read this 4.11? Uh, I, 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 my telephone, I don't know really how to get to a uh... I have okay, the, okay, okay no. I, I, have, I have the text I have the text there yeah yeah so Bhagavad Gita four twelve uh, point 12, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. 11. so ye yeah. tamam prapadyante tam bajami mama vartmanu vartante manusya parta sarvasa Sarvasha. As all surrendered, surrender unto me, I will I reward them accordingly. Everyone follow my path in all respects of Son of Prita. Everyone is searching for Krishna in the different aspects of his manifestations. Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is partially realized in his impersonal Brahma Jyotir effulgence and as the all pervading super soul dwelling within everything, including the particles of atoms. But Krishna is fully realized only by his pure devotees. Consequently, Krishna is object of everyone's realization. And thus, anyone and everyone is satisfied according to one's desire to have him. In the transcendental world also, Krishna reciprocates with his pure devotees in the transcendental attitude, such as a devotee wants him. One devotee may want Krishna as supreme master, another as his personal friend, another as his son, and still another as his lover. Krishna rewards all the devotees equally according to their different intensities of love for him. In the material world, the same reciprocations 
of feeling are there, but they are equally exchanged by the Lord with the different types of worshippers. The pure devotees, both here and in the transcendental abode, associate with him in person and are able to render personal service to the Lord and thus derive transcendental bliss in his loving service. Transcendental bliss in his loving service, yes. As for those who are impersonalist and who want to commit spiritual suicide by annihilation, another, oh, uh, I've lost the line. Cannot release the transcendental bliss. By annihilating and, the individual existence of the living entity, Krishna helps also by absorbing him, absorbing them. By absorbing them in, in the fulgence. Such impersonalism, um, such impersonalism. Do not agree. Uh, maybe I can, I, I can continue. Yeah, you can finish maybe. Thank you. Yeah. Such impersonalists do not agree to accept the eternal blissful personality of Godhead. Consequently, they cannot release the bliss of transcendental personal service to the Lord, having extinguished their individuality. Some of them who are not firmly situated even in the impersonal existence return to this material world to exhibit their dormant desires for activity. They are not admitted into the spiritual planet, but they are again given a chance to act on the material planet. For those who are duty workers, the Lord awards the desired results of their prescribed duties as the Igneshwara, and those who are yogis seeking mystic powers are awarded such powers. In other words, everyone is dependent for success upon his mercy alone. And all kinds of spiritual processes are but different degrees of success on the same path. Unless, therefore, one comes to the highest perfection of Krishna consciousness, all attempts remain imperfect as stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 2.3.10. Akama Sarva Kamova Moksha Kama Udarita Tivarena Bhakti Yogena Yajate Purusham Param. Whether one is without desire, or desirous of all fruity activities, or is after liberation, one should with all efforts try to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead for complete perfection, culminating in Krishna consciousness. So this is a, a popular verse often quoted in Krishna conscious discussions. Because the Lord Krishna is saying that as we approach him, he will reciprocate. So Lord Krishna is a person and he has feeling and he can understand how much we're attached to him. And the more we're attached to him, the more he is attached to us. The more we take interest in him, the more he takes interest in us. It's, it's a reciprocation. You know, you love someone, you're attached to someone, then the person will know it and he, he will also have feelings for you. And he will make, you know, he'll make arrangements so that he want to help and to be with you more and so on. He'll be more concerned about you because he knows that you're concerned about him. So Krishna is like that. When Krishna sees someone devote to him, then he makes more arrangements for them. So Prabhupada describes different types of relationships which, there, which are there in the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, we know that, well, that Krishna has servants. And then above that, there are Krishna's friends. And then above his friends, more intimately connected, are his parents. And above his parents are his lovers, his girlfriends. And they're the most intimately connected to Krishna. And so Krishna recognizes these different people in proportion to how they approach him. 
Prabhupada told us one time, he said, you think of Krishna 10 minutes a day, he will think of you 15 minutes a day. You think of Krishna three hours a day, Krishna will think of you three and a half hours a day. It, it's, it's a reciprocation. Krishna sees that, you know, we're, how much we're devoted to him and Krishna will relate in a similar manner. If somebody's thinking of Krishna 24 hours a day, then Krishna is certainly thinking of him at every moment of the day also. So it's not by chance. Nothing is by chance. It's a law of nature. As you approach, you get a proportionate result. So the impersonalists, they have a particular feeling. Their feelings are not to the person Krishna. Their feeling is to the impersonal aspect, to the energy or the light. And they want to become one. And so Krishna understands their nature. Okay, let them go there. Let them go into the light, into the oneness, into the merging situation. But that's not for a devotee. A devotee is practicing bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga means there has to be the Lord and the Lord's devotees and the process of devotional service like that. So it's, it's very important, a very important verse to remember. Of course, we know Krishna will speak about surrender at the end of the Bhagavad Gita in the 18th chapter. And there Krishna will say, Krishna will say in the 18th chapter, that just surrender fully to me. And he said, I will free you from all sinful reactions and I will protect you. Do not fear. So this verse is also speaking about surrender, but Krishna is speaking in a general way. He said, as you surrender, I will reward you accordingly. You approach me a little bit, I can approach you a little bit. If you don't approach me, I don't bother about you also. <laughs> it's like that. It's, it's a relationship. Hmm. All right, any questions? Uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, physics of my humble businesses. Uh, how can someone understand the Bhagavad Gita as an impersonal teaching? It's very strange because we understand uh, that uh, Krishna is in the center of Bhagavad Gita. Where do they uh, take in Krishna from Bhagavad Gita? It's very interesting. Yes, but you see the impersonalist commentator is very expert to interpret everything. And they will not give much importance to Krishna. And they will translate it, everything in a different way. And they will say, oh, Krishna means the unlimited, the unmanifest, the unknown. They won't say Krishna means a person. So they will explain everything in their own way, just to bewilder the mind of the person. You have to understand how expert these people are, they're very, very, because every word in Sanskrit has many different meanings. So they will explain everything in, a, in an impersonal manner and to give everything another meaning. Just like when it says Govinda. So we think of Govinda as the name of Krishna, but the impersonals will think, or go means the cow, or means the senses. Go win the one who's one who's in protecting the cows, or looking after the cows, and the senses. They don't give the Vaishnava commentary. They give their own commentary, their own speculations, 
And there's so many Bhagavad Gita's like that. They're all like that practically. Ours is the only one which has a personal commentary. All the others are impersonal. They will say the five Pandavas are the five senses and Kurukshetra is the body. And they'll give everything some other meaning, all speculations. And they say there's only one soul, there's no param, there's no, there's no uh, question of two souls, but there's only the one soul and it's all uh, the one, the oneness and the goal that everyone has to surrender into the oneness. So you have to Yes. Uh, I'm uh, right uh, vacation. Uh, reading, please, in the chat. Okay. I'll read the chat. Question from Simon here. <clears throat> there are 101 arteries of the heart, one of which pierces the crown of the head. Going upwards by it, a man at death attains immortality. But when his prana passes out by other arteries going in different directions, then he is reborn in this world from the Kasha Kata Upanishad. Who can teach me this method? Well, I don't know who can teach you this method. I don't know anybody who practices. Okay. This is nothing to do with bhakti yoga. This is something about the yoga controlling the pranas, you see. We practice bhakti yoga, which is very different process. So this is a very different, even Arjuna, when Krishna was telling him about this kind of thing, Arjuna said, hey, you know, I can't do this. He said, I cannot do this. He said, I can't control my mind. Have you any idea how much you have to sit in meditation and how still you have to be and how you have to really concentrate and control the mind? Nobody can do it in this age. It's not for people, ordinary people in this age. Just to get people to follow four regulative principles is difficult for people today. And to ask them to chant six, 16 rounds it's difficult for people today. So they can never do this kind of thing. This is not for ordinary people. But it's mentioned there, just to let you know that there are other processes, but they're much more difficult than the process of bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga is simple and it's joyful and it's powerful. You take up the bhakti yoga, you feel the effect. But you do this kind of thing, try to do this and wait for death. You might be lucky, but very, very difficult. As it said, 101 arteries and only one of them. You have, you have to go out through one of them, one special artery. If you go out through another one, then you come back. So your chances of success by that method are very small. But if you chant Hare Krishna mantra, if you follow four principles and chant Hare Krishna mantra every day, 16 rounds, then you have a great chance of success. But this other process like here, very, very rare, very difficult. But chanting Hare Krishna, very easy. Okay, thank you very much. All right, Vaishnavi. Next verse. 
كسر ما ده Oh, 4.12, Tanmay Prabhu, can you please read this? Sure, Mataji. Thank you, Prabhu. <clears throat> Kansanta karmanam siddhim yagnata yagnata yajanta iha devata ही मानुसे लोके ट्रांसलेशन मेन इन दिस वर्ल्ड डिजायर सक्सेस इन फ्रूटिव एक्टिविटीज एंड देर फोर दे वर्शिप द डेमी गॉड्स क्विकली ऑफकोर्स मैन गेट रिजल्ट फ्रॉम फ्रूटिव वर्क इन दिस वर्ल्ड There is a great misconception about the gods or demigods of this material world and men of ill intelligence although passing as great scholars take these demigods to be various forms of the supreme lord <coughs> excuse me actually the demigods are not different from forms of god but they are gods different parts and parcels god is one and the parts and parcels are many The Vedas say, "Nityo nityam, God is one. Ishvara Parama Krishna, the supreme God is one, Krishna, and the demigods are delegated with powers to manage this material world. These demigods are all having entities, nityam, with different grades of material power. They cannot be equal to the supreme God Narayan, Vishnu, or Krishna." anyone who thinks that god and the demigods are the same level is called an atheist or pashundi even the great demigods like brahma and shiva cannot um, cannot be compared to the supreme lord in fact the lord is worshiped by demigods such as brahma and shiva shiva brinchinutam yet curious curiously enough there are many human leaders who are worshiped by foolish men under the misunderstanding of anthropomorphic anthropomorphism or zoomorphism iha devata denotes a powerful man man or demigod of this world but narayan vishnu or krishna the supreme personality of godhead does not belong to this world he is above or transcendental to material creation even shripad shankaracharya the leader of the impersonalists maintain that narayan or krishna is beyond this material creation however foolish people rita jnana worship the demigods because they want immediate results they get the results but do not know that results so obtained are temporary and are meant for less intelligent persons the intelligent person is in krishna consciousness and he has no need to worship the paltry demigods for some immediate temporary benefit the demigods of this material worlds as well as their worshipers will vanish with the annihilation of the material world the boons of the demigods are material and temporary both the material worlds and their inhabitants including the demigods and their worshipers are bubbles in the cre- in the cosmic ocean in this world however human society is mad after temporary things such as material opulence of possessing land family and enjoyable paraphernalia to achieve such temporary things people worship the demigods or powerful men in human society if a man gets in ministership in the government by worshiping a political leader he considers that he has achieved a great boon all of them are therefore kowtowing to the so called leaders or big guns in order to achieve temporary boons and they indeed achieve such things 
Such foolish men are not interested in Krishna consciousness for the permanent solution to the hardships of material existence. They are all after sense enjoyment and to get a little facility for sense enjoyment, they are attracted to worshipping empowered living entities known as the demigods. This verse indicates that people are rarely interested in Krishna consciousness. They are mostly interested in material enjoyment and therefore they worship some powerful living entity. Joy Shri Prabhupada. Tanmoy, are you hypnosis? Guru Maharaj, I sleep. <laughs> yes. Any question? Maharaj, I have a Guru Maharaj, I have a question. In this verse, it mentions that, uh, in not the verse, but in the purport, Sri Prabhupada mentions that demigods are part and parcel of God, but not the complete form of it. In that way, aren't we also part of God because we have spiritual, um, little bit of flair from the in, in our spirit? It's yes. just a very small quantity. Yes, we are also parts of Krishna, right? We're tiny parts. Yeah. We're like okay. sparks. Krishna is like the fire. And we're like tiny parts of Krishna. We have the same qualities of Krishna, but in different quantity. So we should not, um, we should give respect to gods, demigods, but never think that demigods are God. Right. We okay. have to give respect to demigods because they are taking on a big position. They have a responsibility to assist Lord Krishna in the administration of the universe. So we have to give our respect to them, that they're in that big position as administrators, overseeing the affairs of the universe. And so we should certainly offer respect to them. And we can go to the temples of the demigods and we can bow, bow before them and so on. But we don't usually take prasad. We won't take the prasad of the demigods. We won't take the food which is offered to the demigods. Hmm. Unless it's first offered to Krishna or Vishnu. Now sometimes they offer food first to Krishna or Vishnu and then offer it to the demigods and then you can take that if it's first offered to Krishna because it's Krishna's prasadam. But we won't take it if they offer directly to the demigods and then then we cannot take that because it's their prasadam. Thank you very much. So some, diff some differences there. We have to be careful about that, conscious about that. Uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Similarly uh, with the name, we chant the name of the Supreme Lord. We, we shouldn't chant the names of the demigods in Kirtan. Right, we shouldn't be chanting Durga Kirtan or Ganapati Kirtan. We chant Krishna Kirtan. Yes. Krishna. Yeah. Kirtan, just one small thing. Yeah. When we since uh, Ganapati is known as uh, not not known as like we always know that some to st start something it's good to remember Ganapati. So when we start Krishna chanting or we start praying, can we uh, pay our obeisances to Ganapati so that our chanting and Krishna consciousness and bhakti becomes more purified? Well, you could do, but it's not That's quite the way uh, which Prabhupada taught us. You know, it is it is mentioned like that in some places. Some some of the some of the acharyas, like Rupa Goswami, writes in Nectar of Devotion that generally we would worship Lord Ganesh first to overcome the obstacles in the path of devotion. But Prabhupada points out, and if you study the scriptures, you will see 
that actually the power to overcome the obstacles is given to Lord Ganesh by Lord Nishringadev. Lord Nishringadev is the one who empowers Lord Ganesh to overcome the obstacles. And this is described also by Lord Brahma in the Brahma Samhita, that that power to overcome the obstacles is not really Lord Ganipati's power, but he gets that power because he holds on to the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu or Govinda. So Prabhupada was worried that people, if people start to worship Ganesh or Ganapati, they will think all the gods are the same. And they will think Krishna and Ganapati are the same. So Prabhupada did not introduce this worship of Ganapati. And he taught us simply to worship Krishna. Because there's so much impersonalism and so much Mayavadi ideas that people think all the gods are one and they're all the same. And it doesn't matter who you worship. And they start worshiping Ganapati and they think, well, just worship Ganapati. Why worship Krishna? You would just worship Ganapati. And they, and they, they, they don't realize that Ganapati is the only supposed to be worshipped initially to overcome the obstacles to take up the path of devotion. And the devotion is meant for the Supreme Lord. And Ganapati is not the Supreme Lord. So you've got all these people who think Ganapati is the Supreme and they worship him as being the Supreme. And so this is a problem. So Prabhupada avoided all that and he just taught only worship of Krishna or Jagannath <laughs> or Lord Rama. He didn't introduce the demigod worship, the devas, because there's a difference. You worship the demigods, you worship these people, the demigods, then you, you go off track and everything will be lost. And we do see a lot of people, they worship them. Now, the demigod worship is there in the Vedic culture, and it's meant to bring people to worship the Supreme, because the result of worshiping demigods is that you get material benefit, which is limited and temporary. But people know that if you worship the demigods, you get results quickly, just like it's mentioned here. Men in this world desire success, therefore they worship the demi. Quickly they get results. But now Krishna, he doesn't give results so quickly. Krishna is more careful. The demigods, they give results quickly, but these results often bring trouble, bring problems to people. So Krishna is more careful, he's more conscious about giving people their desires, fulfilling their desires. Because he knows it's just going to give them problems, it's going to entangle them and keep them in the material world. And Krishna wants to get them out of the material world. He wants to bring them all back to Godhead. But if they want to get material benefits, they want to enjoy the material world, then they'll never get back to Godhead. But demigods are easy to please. Just like Lord Shiva is Asutosh. He's easily pleased, but also easily angered. Yeah. So you have to be very careful. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Of course, in Bengal, Bengali culture, they like to worship Mother Durga and Mother Kali, right? That's Bengali culture. Yes. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also appeared here in Bengal and he, he taught Krishna Bhakti. Thank you, Tan. It's, it's not really Bengali culture, <laughs> but it's culture of the spiritual world. Lord Chaitanya was giving the highest thing, Krishna Prem. The problem is people don't want the highest thing 
they, 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 they want these material things. They want material to satisfy their material desires. So they have to, they have to get some purification. So, so if they worship the demigods properly, then gradually they can be purified and they can understand that the results of worshipping demigods is just simply a waste of time. You're not getting any real benefit from it. And then they should think, what is higher? And then they will learn that of all kinds of worship, the worship of Lord Vishnu is the highest. They should learn how, how to do that. And that leads to Krishna Bhakti. So Lord Krishna, he doesn't encourage demigod worship. You see in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna speaks quite strongly about it, that it's for less intelligent people. And we see people like in Bengal who worship Durga and Kali, that often they're intoxicated and they're yeah. fond of killing goats. They do a lot of goat killing intoxication and their puja their durga puja kali puja it becomes a very nasty affair blood everywhere and people are intoxicated not pleasant But people come to see the worship of Lord Krishna, like here in Mayapur, if they come and see the worship of Lord Krishna and they see how everything, prasadam is all vegetarian, everything is very pure, there's no intoxication allowed anywhere. It's a very different atmosphere. Yes? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Someone else had a question? Kiran Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, uh, I was uh, talking in that uh, perspective only of, uh, uh, of, the, of Lord Krishna that um, we, we know that uh, Srimad Bhagavatam and uh, of course Mahabharat and uh, Although this uh, Bhagavad Gita was told by Lord Sri Krishna and then it was written by uh, Bhagavan Vyasadeva. But uh, he has also written uh, the, as they say, the Tamasic Purans and the Rajasic Purans. And he has written about, uh, he has all this same author has uh, written about uh, Shiva Puran. And uh, in Shiva Puran, he is considered the Lord Shiva is considered the supreme uh, in Shiva Puran, and uh, Bhagavan Vyasadeva only wrote it. And uh, I, I, and, and uh, even uh, when uh, our in our books India, uh, Ramcharit Manas is very very famous. Ramcharit Manas, and Tulsi Das uh, is a very well known devotee of Lord Rama. And uh, he starts uh, all his books by chanting uh, Lord Ganesha's name as the remover of obstacles. So um, to keep concept in the mind uh, and uh, praying to Lord Krishna is always right. But uh, following the rules uh, and the setup of this world, which is that uh, all the great devotees have done it then why won't we follow it? It's, it's not wrong uh, because uh, Lord Ram Charit Manas is written by Tulsi Das and he's a great devotee of Lord Rama. And every book he starts with chanting of Lord Ganesha. Although what you say is true and right, but the, the status of the world is that so, and even when Lord Rama 
and krishna have come they have said for for material success uh, they lord krishna recommended arjuna to worship lord shiva uh, to get the weapons for fighting so for spiritual advancement and all lord krishna's puja is perfectly right but respecting all other demigods doesn't decrease the respect of lord krishna so if that's sometimes the requirement like then i don't see anything wrong because the great devotees have done it and they have followed the same path aha uh-huh. well ram charit manas is the modern day interpretation of pastimes of lord rama the actual commentator on the pastimes of lord ram is balmiki ramayan yes right so yes. it's balmiki ramayan which is not the authorized what version now uh, this Tosi Dash Ramayan, this is modern day version. He, of course, is the great devotee of Lord Ram, and he, but he offers respects to Ganesha. All right, he's doing like that, but Prabhupada is teaching us something else. He, Srila Prabhupada is conscious of the problems which come. And he was conscious that if we, if we introduce other gods like this, it can be a problem. the problem is people think all one now shrila vyasa dev you mentioned he wrote many puranas 18 puranas six for the mode of passion six for the mode of ignorance as well as six for the mode of goodness and he wrote mahabharat and he was not satisfied and it was at that time that his guru narada muni came to him and narada muni chastised him and he told him He said, the problem is you have not encouraged people in the path of devotion to the Supreme Lord. He said, you've simply encouraged people in the path of so many different ritualistic activities. And therefore, Srila Vyasadeva, after taking instruction from Narada Muni, then he compiled the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the ripened fruit of the puranas and it's his mature contribution to the vedic literature he compiled the shrimad bhagavatam this is the amala purana the spotless purana the other puranas are you know they're different affairs so certainly for the modes of passion and the mode of ignorance you know there's different things mentioned there for these people of the lower nature but if you read shrimad bhagavatam nigama kalpataro galatam palam shukamukha damrita travasam the shrimad bhagavatam this is a fruit of all of the vedas and this is meant for those people who are thoroughly honest so this is a mature contribution of shila vyasadev and it was shrimad bhagavatam which was emphasized by shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and we are following in the line of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu Now, Tosi Das Ramayana, that's, that's a different line. We're not following Tosi Das. You know, we're, we're followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. And in the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, the tradition is like this. And now it's stated in the Purana also, of all kinds of worship, the worship of Lord Vishnu is the highest. So we emphasize the importance of worship of Lord Vishnu in his different forms. Lord Krishna, Lord, Lord Krishna is actually the supreme form, the original form of Lord Vishnu. And then Lord Rama and Lord Nishingadev, they're Vishnu, they're Vishnu forms. And then Gornitai, Gornitai is Krishna Balaram. Rajendra Nandana say, Sachi Sutta Hailahe, Balaram Hoilo Nitai. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes, he's, he's Krishna himself, the son of Nanda Maharaj, and Balaram comes as Nitai, Nityananda. So we worship also Gaur Nitai because they're very merciful and they have come to teach everyone the process for the Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga Dharma Hari Nam Sankirtan. Krishna Bhakti, uh, Kali Yuga Dharma Hari Nam Sankirtan, Krishna Krishna Bhakti, ta, ta, Krishna Shakti, Prabhatant, 
that you, in order to spread the chanting of the holy name, one has to have the shakti, the power from Lord Krishna. So we, the emphasis is on chanting of the holy name. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu emphasized chanting and worship of Krishna over all others. So we are following that line, you see. We're not following the, these other things, worshipping, you know, other gods. Yeah, we understand worship of Ganesh can help us to destroy obstacles. So if one is conscious, you can do it. You know, you may do it. You, you feel some attachment for Lord Ganesh. You may also worship Lord Ganesh initially. But at the same time, you know, he's not the supreme. So Prabhupada didn't want to introduce this into the temples because he saw other temples, how there are many gods and people come and they think, oh, all the gods, they're all the same. They're all one. Shiva, Vishnu, Ganesh, Krishna, Rama, all are one. All are they, they don't understand the actual position. So Prabhupada wanted to make it very clear to everyone. That was the point. That's why he didn't encourage us to do the things. Although it's there, it's even there in the Vaishnava commentaries that we should worship. And we know also Sanatan Goswami was a great devotee of Lord Shiva. And so, you know, you can do these things. You just have to, but you, you just have to be careful to understand the position of Lord Ganesh and Lord Shiva that they're great, but they're not supreme. They're also servants of the Supreme Lord. So we offer our respect to them. But we're not encouraged, we, we don't usually keep, keep them in the temple. That's a, the that's a point. Just to, to avoid the confusion. But certainly we offer our respects to Lord Ganesh and to Lord Shiva and the other devas. You like to do it, you can do it on your own, but you know, Pra Prabhupada, he didn't do it. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go to all the temples, he would go to the Shiva temples and go and see the different deity, offer respects, offer obeisances. But he would chant the holy name. He would chant the holy name of Krishna, he'd chant the names of the Supreme Lord. Yeah, um, yeah, to the, that, uh, there is a story in uh, Jagannath Puri because uh, especially when I heard about Lord Ganesha, uh, so we came to know that uh, there is a story in Jagannath Puri that um, there was a devotee of Lord Ganesha uh, who came to Puri and um, he went to the temple and he saw uh, Lord Jagannath and uh, he wanted to see his Ishtadevata in that form and uh, he could uh, see uh, in Lord Jagannath's Murti uh, Lord Ganesha's uh, task and things. So till now, when uh, the prayer happens in Jagannath Puri, uh, I, do, I don't know the exact uh, Sanskrit sloka which, which is quoted while starting the prayers, but he is told that because he started, he looked as uh, Ganesha for some devotee. So because Lord Krishna is only behind all the all the demigods. So uh, he could see his Ishta Devata in Jagannath Puri. So and even in many places in Odisha, uh, in, Jag in Lord Ganesha's temples, uh, we see uh, Lord Jagannath with a tusk. Uh, so it's it's it can be seen in many temples in Odisha. So that's why we have this uh, thought process, and uh, that's the reason I ask. Yes. Yes, it's true. I know this. But Lord Jagannath has a, a dress, a particularly a, 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 on that particular day he'll wear the Ganesh dress, Ganesh outfit. Uh, and but 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 people misunderstand and they think Lord Jagannath is the same as Ganesh. They don't understand that Lord Gan Lord Jagannath is reciprocating with these different devotees. Because that devotee desired to see Lord Jagannath, he, he was a devotee of Ganesh, 
So Lord Jagannath accommodated his wish. He showed him Lord Ganesh. But it's not that Lord Ganesh is equal to Lord Jagannath. It's not that they're one and the same. But the form of Lord Ganesh is included within Jagannath. Everything. They all, all these different forms of the demigods, they all come from the Supreme Lord. Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, he is the source of everything. So everything comes from him. And so this form, this form of Ganesh is also coming. It's also there within the form of Lord Jagannath. But it's not that Ganesh is equal to Jagannath. That's the problem that people have that, they think that, oh, Ganesh is equal to Jagannath. They don't understand that Lord Jagannath is the Lord of the universe and Lord Ganesh is one of his servants. A different position, right? Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, we, we, have to, we have to make it clear. Lord Jagannath, is, he's the Lord of the Jagat. And Ganapati, he is not. He's a servant of the Lord. He's helping to remove the obstacles on the path of devotion. And that devotion is to the Supreme Lord, to Lord Jagannath, or Lord Vishnu, or Lord Krishna. So these things have to be understood. This is why we under, this is why we're studying Bhagavad Gita. This is the teaching. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He stayed in Jagannath Puri for twenty-four years, or rather, eighteen years actually. Six years he was traveling in India, South India, but he spent eighteen years staying in Jagannath Puri. And every day he would go and see Lord Jagannath. And he took part in all the festivals of Lord Jagannath. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches us, worship Krishna, chant the name of Krishna. Krishna Bhakti. But so if, if you, by worshiping Ganesh, if it helps you to develop your Krishna Bhakti, then no harm. That's very good. Yes, Bro. Okay, Vaishnavi, we'll chant Hare Krishna. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda. Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Va 